highest vibrations of love and light can be in this space and all objects in this space for the highest good for this reading today. All other energies must leave now. I call in the highest level of the divine that knows that love is a power and a truth from which we read the highest level guides and angels to help us with this reading. Archangel Michael, hold this space for us. And so it is. And so we do acknowledge the forces of light, asking for guidance, direction, and courage to know the truth, as it is revealed for our highest good and the highest good of everyone connected to us. O Holy Spirit of God, records are not open. All right. Um, I always talk about this, so I might as well get into it. Um, I mentioned earlier that a lot of us uh, star seeds have been incarnating here on Earth um, since uh, World War II, and there was a reason for that. Um, and this will probably resonate with you. Um, there was... You know, uh, before in, in past history, there were star seeds that visited Earth, and quite a, um, and I would say a few ascended masters, but it was few and far between. It was, you know, usually for a specific project, and uh, uh, or you know, the, the, there, you have these great ascended masters, usually from Sirius star system, who would come and you know try to direct Earth on the right direction. Um, you know, such as your Buddhas and your, you know, Jesus Christ and, you know, people like that. And uh, usually those individuals were persecuted in some some way um, because people weren't ready for their message. Um, it seemed like for a while Earth has continued to go on this um, evolutionary path that has taken it away from the direction that it was destined to go. And hence, you know, that was what I think accumulated into the world wars. You know, you had World War I, which was bad, and then World War II, which was even worse because that was when Hiroshima was bombed, you know, the, the, the atomic bomb was bombed on Hiroshima. Uh, the galactic councils noticed th that and they were very upset about it because um, they remembered what happened on Maldek. Do you know about Maldek at all? Sure do. Yeah. Got destroyed. Yeah, got destroyed. Yeah. So they didn't want Earth to suffer the same fate. Okay. Have ourselves, you know, silly humans blow ourselves up. So, uh, so they they had a call for volunteers to come assist with, um, you know, shifting Earth back into its uh, into the ascension process, and the uh, uh, so they called, you know. Star, star people from all star systems, and many of us volunteered to be here. So even you volunteered to be here, and I did, even though sometimes I wonder why, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was like, hmm, uh, what did I sign myself up for here, <laughs> you know? So, um, so, so a lot of us started incarnating right after, like around 1946, 1947, and then on through, you know, even now there's star seeds that are still incarnating on Earth. And uh, there's uh, Dolores Cannon, who I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, love her. Yeah, love her. isn't she wonderful? I love her too. Oh, um, she's like she's like my my mentor, my idol, you know. So. Uh, Cry on. I listen to a lot. Yeah, Cry on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I listen to him as well. Um, uh, Dolores uh, categorized the star seeds that were coming in in three waves. Uh, I'm a first waver because I was born. I'm pretty sure I'm second. You're second. Yeah, yeah, you got it. And so your role is to bust down old systems. Okay, so these were what the, what they also called the indigos. You know, these were the people that were kind of rebellious. You know, that were trying to. Uh, you know, shift uh, Earth into a different reality. Okay, so so that is basically you know your one of your core missions. Uh, you have you know other missions beyond that, but uh, but that's the core mission with with second wave star seeds. Uh, I think John was a first waver as well. Yeah, he he was born. I think he was born a year after me, or maybe a year before me. Uh, 
Anyway, uh, I am getting star system of origin. Um, yours is actually quite, your, your path is actually quite different from John's, okay? Um, I'm getting that uh, you're, you're, you incarnated in a star system that uh, it was called um, Procyon, okay? And uh, Procyon is a star in the Canis Minor constellation. Um, and, uh, I, I, you don't get a lot of Procyonians, um, but the ones that do come on earth, you know, when I look at, you know, the categorization of, you know, the bulk of star seeds that, you know, incarnate on earth, the majority of them are from Pleiades and Sirius, you know, and that's because those are the two, two star systems that had the most involvement with earth. Um, you get, uh, then you get a few from Andromeda, you get a few from, you know, other other star systems. But uh, Procyon, uh, you're probably like my fifth Procyonian star seed. So, Interesting. yeah, so I don't get a whole lot of them. Um, now, the Procyonians uh, have an interesting history, okay? And they're actually pretty badass, okay? And I'll tell you why a little later. So, um, yeah, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty uh, strong souls. Um, the Procyon people were, um, I think, predominantly uh, descendants of of Lyrans who were refugees from the Lyran Draconian Wars. Okay. So, uh, there was, um, and I think, do you know about the Lyran history? It sounds like you're very well read. So yeah, I, I, I didn't know a lot about him until you did John's right. rather yeah. about them because he was a Lyran. Yeah. He was a Lyran initially. Yeah. And then he ended up in, um, Andromeda. So, yeah, so with you, um, I'm not seeing that you had prior incarnations in Lyra. Um, I'm seeing that when your your uh, your soul decided to manifest into physical reality, um, you incarnated directly into Procyon. Okay, and what that tells me about you is that you're probably somebody that's very technical. Okay, so or somebody that likes technology. Um, because, uh, uh, so do you work in computers or, or technology at all? No, actually, I'm a registered licensed dietitian. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay. And it's, it's funny how you, you already said that I'm here to break down systems because I actually have a website. My whole meaning of existence is to bring down the um, allopathic medical system, the medical cartel. Basically. Right. That's kind of what I base my system around. Right. Holistic health. Mm hmm And uh, it's interesting that you're in diet, di you know, you're a dietitian because the Procyonian people, um, I would say they're they're one of the most physically robust people in um, all of all the star systems, um, including the Pleiadians. Uh, they're usually very well built. Um, they're they're extremely healthy and vital and uh, to give you an example of a famous person who's a Procyonian uh, starseed, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with Richard Branson, who owns Virgin, the Virgin Company. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He um, he's a pro he's he's a starseed from Procyon, and uh, he's obviously a very vital man. Uh, but in addition to that, he's also uh, somebody that has excellent leadership skills that is very entrepreneurial. Um, and it sounds like you're kind of an entrepreneurial person yourself. And, yeah. And, uh, somebody that, um, is a master of his own destiny. Okay. And that kind of explains like a little bit of the Procyon personality. Uh, they're not people that are victims. Okay. <laughs> you know, they're, yeah, yeah, they're, they're people that take the bulls by the horns. They, they go out and they, they blaze their own, you know, their own way into, into society and they make huge changes. You know, obviously That's Richard nice. Branson, yeah, Richard Branson kind of changed the whole scope of what entrepreneurship is all about. And another thing I'm picking up too, and I, I didn't know, know this until, I mean, I just saw that in the records kind of, you know, kind of flash, sometimes they get these flashes and it's like, okay. Um, 
Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is Procyonian as well, so I didn't know. I didn't know that, but uh, um, and I think you know maybe in his own kind of awkward way, he he's trying to make some positive changes. Um, I don't think he was quite as successful as um, well. Like you know, he he did become governor of California, or so you know he he did make it pretty far, but. Uh, but, you know, you have some examples of some very strong individuals who are Procyonians, okay? And, and I'll tell you a little more about the Procyonian involvement with Earth and, uh, and why I think they're so badass, okay? <laughs> so, uh, but I, I want to kind of get the background story here first. Um, so in um, your first incarnation... Um, yeah, I do see that, um, interestingly enough, what you were doing is, and I think this is kind of the core essence of who you are. Um, you're somebody that likes to combine um, high-level spirituality with technology, okay? And that pretty much, I think, explains how the Procyon people are. Um, they are highly evolved technologically, but they're, they also you know, always try to maintain a certain level of spirituality, you know, throughout, you know, their, their own evolutionary growth. Uh, the Alpha Centaurians, who are also highly spirit, uh, technologically developed, do not have the spiritual component. Okay. So, uh, the, um, these, these folks, um, are, are kind of lacking. Um, and I think that's why they're only, you know, fourth and some of them are fifth dimensional, but, Procyonians were mostly sixth and seventh, so they were pretty, pretty, pretty evolved. I mean, these were very evolved wow. people, you know. So, uh, wow, so they're up there with the blue avians. Huh? Yeah, yeah, they're they're pretty powerful folks. Um, now they've always had a close relationship with Sirius, and that's because Sirius is um, in Canis Major, which is the closest, you know, major star to them. So, um, but the Syrians were always more mother goddess, uh, consciousness oriented. Um, and maybe that's why the, you know, the, the Procyon people have an interesting relationship with them because the Procyons are father God consciousness oriented. So, uh, so these people were, you know, all about, I think exhibiting the best of, I would call divine masculine qualities. So, you know, like leadership and uh, organization and, you know, entrepreneurship and, you know, technology, that sort of thing. But uh, but I think they um, actually uh, turned to the Syrians to help develop their spiritual side, uh, because like all the other star groups that descended from Lyra, they were trying to prevent what happened to Lyra to, um, to, you know, their own, their own civilization. And that's why some of these groups became highly spiritually and technologically advanced. Uh, so um, with you, I'm seeing that in your first life, um, interestingly enough, um, you were a um, kind of a healer or uh and, but you used a lot of technology um, to help, I think, uh, track, you know, certain, and you were, you were doing uh, this kind of revolutionarily. Um, I think you developed some systems that were able to track illnesses in certain, certain folks. And uh, what, I'm, what, the, what the records are showing me is uh, you weren't the only one, but you were one of, I think, quite a few Procyonian people that managed to um, to help, uh, I think, the Procyon people um, establish the excellent health that they have. Okay, so they, you know, they just have, um, and because uh, before what what was happening before in Procyon was that there was elements of I think um, old karmic, uh, uh, pre, you know the karmic baggage that from, from Lyra that would show up in people and it would manifest itself as physical illness. And so, um, you and I think several other Procyon healers were, was able to pinpoint this 
and use technology to um, to resolve these issues. Okay, so right. wow. um, you know it's funny that you mention this um, because well, it's, it's seriously resonating with me because um, at 44 years old, I'm the most healthiest 44 year old you'll ever meet in your life. I have no comorbidities mm -hmm. um, and, and and things like that and. I can look at a specific person who has a certain comorbidity and tell them exactly what's wrong with them in a holistic way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not surprised to hear that. Um, now the Procyon people are also, um, have highly developed, uh, uh, psychic skills. Okay. Um, which is interesting right. because yeah, they're, they're very technologically oriented, but yet, because of their uh, connection with the Syrians and, you know, the Syrians were not, um, actually the Syrians were pretty technologically advanced, um, not quite as much as the Procyon people. So it was kind of like you guys had this exchange going, you know, it was like you would share technology with the Syrians and they would uh, share their healing modalities with you because uh, the Syrians were the masters of physical healing. But what you guys did, the Procyonians, and this is all stuff I'm seeing for the first time. I, a lot of times, you know, I just, you know, sometimes don't, uh, I don't know a lot about certain star systems unless I'm going into the, really deep into somebody's records. And it's like, oh, wow, okay, that makes sense, you know. So so what I'm seeing with with the, uh, the Procyon people was that they were actually taking the modalities that they were learning from the Syrians and... Uh, you know, taking them up to that next level with technology. Okay, so that's that's what what you were doing. So you visited Sirius quite a bit. You know, during your um, your time on you know that first very first life on on Procyon, and I'm seeing that um, you've had connections with some some folks that were uh, ascended masters, but they were uh, it was like Ashtar Kumara. It was like more of the galactic uh, people, folks. Um, and then it was Hilarion. Hilarion was actually, he was more of a healer. Um, so you had connection with these ascended masters because, um, you know, you were exchanging information. And uh, and so there was uh, quite a few, like, trips in between, you know, Sirius and Procyon all the time. They had a very close symbiotic relationship with each other so uh, uh so and the syrians are always all about service to others and so that's what they shared you know their concepts with procyon was that you know they they were always about you know uh helping to elevate the highest good of all and that's why you have certain folks like uh jeshua or jesus christ who were who was a syrian uh, ascended master um hilarion who i mentioned before uh kathumi who was actually the ascended master who ascended as saint francis of assisi here on earth so you have all these individuals who were you know just very very highly developed spiritually that was trying to get earth you know shifted into the right path of of love and unity okay um, now the Procyon folks were able to assist the Syrians with, you know, their keen understanding of technology. Okay. But then they were also learning from them how to become more spiritually aligned. Okay. So with you, um, I'm seeing that, uh, initially this was just between, um, Sirius and, and Procyon, but then, uh, some of the other star groups, you know, found out about these revolutionary healing modalities that, you know, the, the two groups were coming up with and, you know, they were coming to find out more about them. And, you know, that would be the Pleiadians, um, mostly the Pleiadians I'm seeing, uh, maybe the Hyadians as well. Hyades is another star cluster that's in the same constel uh, constellation as the Pleiades, but it's just a, you know, different star cluster. So, so, so you had interaction with, you know, all of these, these folks. Um, most of these beings were all humanoid types, um, including the Procyons. The Procyonians look human, except they were taller. 
and probably better built, maybe heavier because they were bigger. I mean, they were just bigger physically. Uh, very, uh, very good builds, um, like very uh, athletic, uh, muscular builds. Even the women um, were, you know, had athletic builds. Uh, do you work out? Do you like to work out? Or I do actually. Um, and you know what's funny is is my son. He um, he had a DNA test done uh, uh, with twenty three and me, and we did both sides of it, the health and the DNA. And it said that he comes from a stock of elite athletes. Oh wow, wow, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah the Procyon people were very physical. Yeah, they. Yeah, it was a martial artist actually for eight years. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Um, so this uh, sounds like this really fits in with who you are even today. You know, this. Oh, you're nailing it. You yeah, are yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, so anyway, um, you had, you know, um, most of your off world lives was on Procyon and, uh, in consequent lifetimes, I'm seeing that uh, you got involved with the Galactic Federation. Pretty much most of us that incarnated here on Earth are here. Is here are it, you know we're here because of the Galactic Federation. Okay, so so you know pretty much you know all of us have some involvement. And uh, uh, with you, uh, I'm seeing in consequent lifetimes. Um, you moved away from, I think, the, the healing aspect for a while. I think uh, your soul wanted to get more aligned with technology. So I, I'm seeing that you served on board a, uh, a starship um, as part of the Procyonian branch of the Galactic Federation for... Uh, you know, for, for, you know, several lifetimes, you know, um, and then you kind of moved up the ranks each time, you know, you, I think you started off as equivalent to a, um, but no, 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 you, you, you were always kind of an officer because, uh, you carried with you, I think the knowledge from your, your first lifetime where you were, you know, working with that technology, and I'm even seeing, you know, sometimes you would be um, a doctor on board the ship or you would be, you know, like a commanding officer of some sort or, you know, a uh, part of the command. So so you kind of shifted roles, you know, depending on the life. But but you always had uh, you're always, you know, involved with this galactic federation. And during this time, you. Uh, your your starship was actually visiting Earth, and this was you know early early in Earth's history, um, and I think it was you were part of an expedition with a team of scientists that were trying to I think determine, um, you know they were trying to find out about Earth, you know because everybody was talking about this place that this beautiful planet that was in this far off sector of the Milky Way, so. So the Procyonians had to check it out for themselves. And I think they were actually, um, I think, co uh, tag teamed with a group of Syrians. And, you know, the Syrians were all master geneticists and uh, the Procyonians were all biological scientists. And I'm seeing that I think you were also a biological scientist uh, during this. That's funny group. because... Uh... I actually, uh, when I went to college for nutrition, I minored in organic biochemistry. Oh wow, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That so a lot of your, a lot of your Procyonian heritage is showing itself up even in your present life. That's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, so um, your group went to Earth, and I'm seeing that. Um, you didn't. You, you visited several parts of Earth. I don't see that you stayed. Uh, you didn't stay like years. Um, uh, you, you stayed for a while, and uh, I'm seeing, uh, interestingly enough, um, North America and South America. You were visiting, and then uh, you visited. I think parts of. Oh, interesting. Um, parts of Asia. Okay, and. Uh, that's great because I've always felt this connection to the Far East. Yeah. Like I said, I was a martial artist. Um, I also, in my spare time, I, I'm a, 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 a bladesmith. So, yes, you you visited, and um, during this time, there was uh, in Asia, there was Andromedan uh, colonies there. And I'm seeing that 
I think that's where you first encountered John, because you and John have a prior soul connection. Um, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, John was, uh, I think John had a life in China, so, uh, it's interestingly enough, so, um, so, so you were, so you connect, you, you, you knew, even though, uh, I think at the time John was in human form, but, uh, I mean, your souls recognized that, it, you know, you were, you were, you know, star people, you know, I mean, you knew it, you know, so, uh, so I think, I think you were learning, a lot, um, you were sharing a lot of information from, you know, Procyon and Sirius with these, you know, Chinese, you know, medicine people, you know, and, and so, uh, and, and likewise, you know, they were sharing with you their culture and, you know, their interests and, you know, their unique perspective on, on medicine, that sort of thing. So, so, um, it seems like with, with the theme throughout a lot of your, uh, uh your incarnations, um, in addition to the combination, you know, combining the spiritual with the the tech, technical is also collaboration, okay? You're somebody that you're a leader, but you're also a great team player. You're somebody Absolutely. that that loves to to um, to to work with other people. You're not somebody that says, "Oh, I know it all and I'm, you know, I'm not, I, you know, I'm just going to follow my own path. You know, you're not a loner. You're somebody that likes to work with other people. You, you, you like, you like helping. You like, you, you like the exchange of ideas and you are a Gemini. So I, you know, Gemini's are all about learning new ideas and communication. So, you know, another couple of, um, you know, traits that you have as well. So, so, you know, you, you like that collaboration, you know, and, and so you enjoyed, you know, I think you very much enjoyed your lifetimes where you were able to, you know, go to different cultures and learn, learn different things, you know, so, and I see that's a quality even in this life, you know, where you, you love, you, I, you love to travel and you love to learn about different cultures. You, you love it. You know, it's just, uh, uh, something that um, I don't know if you travel a lot or if you're able to travel a lot, but um, not as much as I would like to. I'm seeing um, more traveling in the future. I think as your kids get older, you'll be traveling a little more. Um, I think right now, because you're young, that probably you know prevents you guys from traveling as much as you like, unless you know it's family trips. So uh, you know, so that's you know something that. Um, I see more of, but I see more like spiritually oriented traveling for you. Okay. Um, I have dreamed, dreamed of going to uh, South America. I would really like to go to Peru. And to be honest with you, I want to do ayahuasca. Yeah, I think I think we all do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely in Peru, you will definitely you know find the shamans that work with that there. Um, I'm actually heading to Central America in another day or two, <laughs> so, oh, right. yeah, I'm oh, going right. to, I'm going to Nicaragua, so, so awesome. yeah, so that'll they be. They actually have an ayahuasca church in, uh, uh, here in the States, in, yeah. uh, in South, Southern Kentucky. Yeah, oh, interesting, I didn't know about that one. I, I know there's yeah. a few in the United States, but, um, I didn't know about the one in, there's K one in California, too, yeah. Yeah, I knew about the one in California, um. Uh, but yeah, that, yeah, that would be, um, now the, the, uh, the ayahuasca trip, I think is going to be, um, for you, uh, uh, I think physically it's going to be difficult, but, um, you know, obviously, uh, con, you know, uh, with high, as far as your higher consciousness, I think you'll start feeling really connected. And I, I'm, I'm seeing you may even get have connections back to your Lyran heritage, you know. Uh, I mean, e even though you never had incarnations in Lyra, you know, your genetics, you know, is going to start getting activated. And so sure. some, of the, some of the old Lyran memories might pop up. So that's why I'm thinking it might be somewhat difficult, but... Uh, and Lyra wasn't always, you know, a sad place. You know, it was, you know, used to be very beautiful. I mean, it was probably the most beautiful planets we, we ever had in this galaxy. Um, and it was sad that they got destroyed. But uh, 
Um, so so you, you may go way back. And I'm seeing that you'll likely have, um, I don't know, the records are showing me, um, the records kind of show me things sometimes that happens in the future. And I'm seeing uh, sometimes I can, you know, feel and see what the person's experiencing. And I'm seeing that you're going to be connecting to um, certain uh Egyptian gods and also uh, South American gods. Okay, so um, so I'm seeing uh, Quetzalcoatl for you. Okay, that's the Interesting. yeah. Um, so you're gonna be the really. God, right? That's the uh, that's the, the 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 what they call it the the feathered snake. Yeah, that's yes. yeah it's the feathered snake. Yeah, so you'll be connecting with that, and it's interesting because the snake is always represented in the Caduceus. So, um, so yes, you will, um, so there's a, and the reason why you'll be connecting with this particular entity is because of the healing, you know, the healing aspects. You're, you're going to get deep into really understanding the human psyche and how it, how it relates to, to healing, you know, so, um, so I think that's part of your mission, actually, um, your mission here on earth um, is to really get a deep understanding of the damage that was done to the human psyche and how that's contributed to illness. Kind of wow. similar to what happened, what you were doing on your very first life in Procyon. Okay, so so you were taking the old um, Lyran uh, traumas and... Uh, and, and trying to get an understanding of how that was contributing to illness on, on Procyon, you're going to be doing the same thing here on Earth. So you're going to get really, really deep. And I see you writing a book about this, okay? Um, but the ayahuasca is going to help you, I think, trigger those old memories and and connect you with certain entities that will become like kind of like spirit guides in, uh, on this journey that you're about to take. So... It's um, it's going to be fascinating. Uh, I'm I'm just really super excited for you. Um, uh, I I kind of see that happening soon, or is that something that's going to happen later? Um, I would say within the next. Um, uh, it's it's whenever you you're able to take your trip to Peru, you are going to go to Peru. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I mean, high probability anyway. You are a free will being, so things can always shift and change, but. Um, uh, yeah, I think, I think you really need to go. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like sound, your guides are like, yeah, he needs to go. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm seeing within the next three or four years. Okay. Maybe hopefully sooner right. than that. Yeah. Hopefully sooner than that. Um, cause you're still relatively young, but, um, um, I'm thinking most likely it'll be three to four. I don't think, you know, if, if uh, I think you're going to wait for your kids to get a little older and then um, you and your wife are going to take this trip. Is she also very spiritually aligned or um, no, not, not at all? Okay. Not, not at all. Yeah, gotcha. Um, and I'm that, getting her there slowly, though. Yeah, yeah. And I do see that as um, I, I, she has a very open heart. And, uh, you know, she's not, um, she's not a very, you know, she's not a super closed down 3D person. So I think as, you know, she... Are you two? Uh, no, you're not newly married. You've been, you have kids that are seven years old, and so about uh, ten years, yeah. Yeah, ten, about ten years. Yeah, I see. As, um, as you start taking these trips, um, she's going to start getting more interested, and in, and in, in, first of all, it's going to start off like really simple spiritual concepts, like the chakra systems. You know, very, very, you know, uh, uh, auras. You know, that sort of thing. She'll get interested in that, and then. Um, she'll exponentially grow from there. So well, what's, what's funny is, um, I, you know, I've talked about aliens and, and things like that with her and she just kind of rolls her eyes. Mm -hmm. But, um, however, I watched a video, um, a two part series, but do you know who Sarah Westall is? Yes. Uh huh. Um, she had this guy who was a Italian guy who was a Vatican translator mm -hmm. and he was talking about the Elohim and mm -hmm. how they came here and created humans and all this different stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was telling her about it and she actually wanted to watch it. Oh, wow. I got her to watch the first part of it. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Really surprising oh, to me. Wow. That is interesting. Um, yeah, maybe she might get in touch with, you know, her, 
you know, her, her heritage or her, her soul essence. Um, and I'm getting with her, um, Lyran heritage. I, I don't know if she's a Lyran star seed. Um, I think she's, I think she's probably earth from earth, but she's, um, Atlantean. That's what they're showing me. Um, and you had a prior connection with her in Atlantis. We haven't we haven't really gotten into your Earth incarnations yet. You had a few, um, uh, but um, so she's the Atlantean. Okay, see, uh, are you familiar with Stuart Swordlow? Oh yes, I know Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> I know his work really uh, okay. well. Yeah. Our son has autism. Yeah. Seven year old. Yeah. Okay, and he always said that uh, Stuart always said that autistic kids are from Atlantean heritage and they have dolphin DNA. Oh, interesting. And, okay. And that that's why um, the what they're affected by autism um, when they're poisoned basically because it's it's a he says it's a plot to confuse the brain and bring out those uh, those uh, Atlantean DNA, basically, so they can be identified. It goes back to an ancient war between the Lemurians and the Atlanteans. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, uh, that's a component um, that corresponds with what I saw in the records with autistic children. And um, a lot of them I've seen in the records, because uh, one of my best friends here has an autistic daughter. And when I did his Akashic records, I... Um, I saw her, you know, her records was connected to his, so I was able to, you know, check into hers. And she was an amphibian, originally an amphib amphibian being from Sirius, okay, so... Interesting. Yeah, and, uh, and the reason why I, the, you know, she, her genetics as a Syrian amphibian was not compatible with the human body. And so, so if these autistic children from Atlantis... Now, they may have been originally, um, now, the dolphins and the cetaceans did originate from Sirius, Sirius B, actually. So they're closely connected with the amphibian beings, okay? I mean, they are, you know, uh, they're not amphibians, but they're, you know, they are mammals, you know, so. And he is absolutely obsessed with water. Yeah, they're, they all are. They, I mean, this girl, too, she, uh, she swims like a fish, I mean. She's kind of awkward on land, but you put her in the water and she swims. She can swim forever. I mean, it's crazy. Um, they all, yeah. yeah, they all have that ability, and that's because that's their their true genetics belongs in the water. They don't belong on land, and so I think a lot of times these souls want to incarnate on Earth because they want to assist with with the Earth Ascension project, but they don't realize that they're you know. Um, their genetics, or maybe they, they choose to come anyway. I think maybe they do realize it, but they choose to come anyway. I think that's true of your son. He wanted to come. He, you know, he, in whatever capacity he wanted. Um, and remember I said you had this connection with Sirius, that you've always been connected with, you know, these Syrian people. And, you know, you were also working with, you know, the uh, not just the humanoid Syrian races, but also the non-humanoid races. You know, so this would be the... Uh, um, now I'm actually seeing that your son is actually a uh, much older soul than you, interestingly enough. Um, wow. yeah, he's, he's ancient. He's like, he's like, he comes from the beginnings of, I don't know if you heard of the, the Namo people that the Dogons in Africa, uh, I've heard of the Dogons, but yeah, yeah, yeah they, Namo. they were connecting with this, uh, Syrian amphibian group called the Namos. Your son is connected to that group. Okay. So, wow. um, so he's Atlantean. He had, he's Atlantean, but he's also, um, even before that he was Syrian. Okay. So, um, but not Syrian humanoid. Um, so this is a different, um, genetic line than the, the Syrians who also were descendants of Lyran, uh, Lyran star, star sea, or Lyran refugees, you know, so, so this, uh, they were, uh, no, actually they were more Lyra Vega, um, but uh, the the uh, amphibian people were actually uh, indigenous to, to Sirius, okay? So they didn't just show up there, you know, they were indigenous to Sirius. So they're even more ancient than 
um, you know, than, than some of the, the groups that are in some of these star systems. So, so yeah, your, your sun is a very, very old soul. And what the records are showing me is that, um, he, you and he, um, I think worked together during that first life when you were exchanging ideas about healing, um, because the Namo people were uh, phenomenal healers. Okay. They were, you know, and, and even today, like dolphins and cetaceans, they have a very healing quality about them. If you were to swim with them, it's why a lot, you know, a lot of people love swimming with dolphins. It's not just because of the novelty of it. It's because of the, you know, the high vibration that these, you know, animals are putting off, you know, so, so, you know, people get a high, you know, <laughs> swimming with these, with these, you know, beings. Um, but uh, what I'm seeing with your son is that you and he worked together in the past, in the very, very first life. And you were, you, you, you were so connected to each other that you could develop a soul contract that you would be around to help each other when it was needed. And, uh, kind of like a, you know, blood brother path pack, you know, like, Hey, you know, I'm there for you, bro, you know, kind of thing. But he wanted to come help you here on earth. And that's why he's here. He knew that he was taking a big risk coming a, a much bigger risk than you were. Cause you have inherently, you know, human genetics, you know, or humanoid genetics. So for you, you know, incarnating on earth, you know, you're, you're at your peak, you know, um, for your son, it was very difficult. Okay. So, so he's, he's, um, going to be, uh, he struggles a little more. I mean, he's always going to struggle with his physicality, but, um, I do see a strong bond between you and him. And, um, but actually out of the two of you, he's actually the much, a more, much older soul. Okay. So, so, you know, during the times of, you know, your past life together, you two had, um, uh, you know, had learned a lot from one another. Um, and then I'm seeing you, you two also had connections in, oh, interesting. Okay. Um, I'm seeing that he incarnated as one of the high level, um, dolphin beings that, um, was in Atlantis. Okay. So, yeah, so he's Syrian Atlantean and, and then he didn't come back for a while. Cause I think during that time that you were on Atlantis, that was when things started going South. Um, and that, by the way, that was your first, um, earth incarnation. Um, you did decide to assist with the, with the earth, project you, you almost had to i mean you know it was kind of like you know you know pretty much everybody you know that was connected with the galactic federation was was getting involved so uh so you um but you knew it was going to be a multi-lifetime project okay you knew it um and uh unlike i think a lot of earth souls uh, us, us as star seeds, uh, you know, we have a little more, uh, I think, uh, control over our, our incarnations, you know, so we choose certain incarnations to, I think, um, and I think the reason why we did this was to create a pathway for this incarnation. Now, this incarnation that most of us are in now is the apex here on earth. It's, it's, it's the catalyst to get earth on its evolutionary path and then we're right there what's that yeah yeah we're right there yeah absolutely yeah so um so but 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 we had to kind of set set the stage or you know set the foundation so that's why a lot of us were having incarnations in prior lives and i'm um, seeing atlantis for your first life and uh, which was different from john i think john was, was lemuria and, um, uh, um, I am seeing that, uh, you connected, um, your, your, your current wife was, um, you were connected with her in that life. And I think you two were also partnered in that life. And I think that's why you decided to get partnered again. Um, she's not quite as obviously not as spiritually developed as you are, but, um, I do see that you know, she will, um, she, she will start, it'll start integrating. She'll start, you know, getting more of an interest. Like I say, it'll start off with little things here and there. 
and uh, and next thing you know, she's going to be watching Ancient Aliens with you all the time. <laughs> so, you know, so because she can't stand it when I watch it. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, it's gonna some of some of it's gonna sink in. Okay, so uh, Good. yeah, some of it's some of it's gonna sink in. So. Um, you might want to play a show, um, for her on the, do they, did they do an episode? I'm sure they did an episode on Atlantis and Lemuria. I, they probably did. They probably did several. You might want to play one of those and see how she reacts to it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but yeah, I do see ancient Atlantean soul with her, but not, not from, and her genetics is Lyran, but, um, I'm not seeing prior lifetimes in, you know, off world lives. So, um, so, you know, but, but, you know, she, she, like other earth souls, you know, they, they're also beautiful souls, you know, you know, we all have beautiful souls. It's just, you know, the earth people need a little boost to kind of get them, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of catching up to, uh, the rest of us so that, you know, they can join the greater galactic family, you know, which is the ultimate goal is, you know, for all of us to become part of that greater galactic family and especially earth people because earth people have been separated from that through the nefarious, you know, uh, you know, going ons with, you know, these, you know, cabalist groups, you know, the, they wanted to keep earth people separated and it's because these groups wanted to keep earth people enslaved. And if Earth people start discovering their true magnificence and who they're connected to, you know, as far as genetically and and spiritually, they're not going to want to remain slaves. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, so, you know, this has been in place on Earth for, you know, thousands and thousands of years, you know, ever since the Anunnaki, you know. So, um, and it was the Anunnaki that kind of... Um, I, I think it was them and probably some reptilian groups that started that whole pro, you know, process. But uh, yes, and it was the whole. I mean, it was it was it was like Lyra all over again. You know, there was always this you know constant, um, you know, light against the dark. You know, this whole drama of light against the dark. You know, one group enslaving another. You know, one group that's trying to fight for their freedom. You know, that sort of thing. So it's ongoing. Uh, the the story of Star Wars, I think, you know, the movies, um, I don't know if you like watching those movies. I like them. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, Star Wars, uh, they're actually based on the Orion Wars. And it's, you know, the whole human drama. <laughs> you know, it's just a story of the human drama. You know, this light against dark and, you know, the, uh, you know, the oppressed race that's trying to fight for their freedom. You know, you know, the, the you know, the, the hero saga, you know, that sort of thing. So, um uh, so a lot of us earth humans, um, or, you know, the earth humans that are here are going to be catching up, you know, then that's what, what our goal as star seeds is to help them to catch up. So, uh, so I think it was no accident that you and your current wife got together again. You know, you had this, you know, um, inherent soul contract. She's kind of like what I would call your earth anchor. And I know that sounds bad, but, uh, no, yeah, no, I, I definitely resonate with that for sure. Yeah. She keeps me, uh, she keeps me, uh, from, I guess you could say, uh, daydreaming too much. She keeps me grounded and down to earth. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, um, um, and that's what earth anchors do, you know, that cause us, us star seeds, we're all, you know, we're all over the place, you know, we're, you know, we're always in the world of ideas and possibilities and, the, you know, the earth people kind of, you know, the, the earth people that we love and are connected to, you know, help keep us grounded here in this reality because we're not used to being in third dimensional reality. So, you know, for us, sometimes it can be very difficult, you know, to, you know, try to get the day to day things done. So um, now uh, my husband is a, a Syrian, a Lyran Syrian, but he's had multiple incarnations on earth. So He's kind of like my earth anchor because he knows earth a lot better than I do. I had very few lives on earth. I mean, it was maybe less than five. I mean, it was, I mean, I just came when I had to, <laughs> you know, and now, yeah, you know, and I think you were set the same way. I, I don't see you had lots of incarnations on earth. I think as Procyonian, um, it was the Procyon people weren't really all that, involved with the human genome project like the Syrians and the Pleiadians were so 
there was not as much Procyonian genetics on on Earth. So I think you had to pick and choose um, very carefully, like which family group that you were able to incarnate into. And uh, um, I am seeing, uh, let's see, life um, in Atlantis, um, a life in Egypt. Okay, so that's where the Egyptian gods are coming in. Okay, you had a life in Egypt. And I think in that life you were working with some sort of medicine. Okay, I think you were, um, okay, they're saying, they're saying embalming. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, wow. Um, I don't know. Um, but you were like, you weren't, you weren't like one of the, the guys that just did the embalming. You were the ones that were kind of supervising those people. So, so you were the one that was developing all the potions and stuff like that, that kept the body, um, I guess intact. So, so you weren't doing the physical work. You were just developing, you know, the, um, again, you know, the, the methods they were going to use to embalm bodies more. And it's kind of, it's kind of related to what you're doing here on earth. You're trying to help people preserve their bodies through diet. So, but you're just u utilizing a different modality, but um, but it's interesting in that life, you're trying to keep people preserved while dead today. You're trying to keep people preserved while they're still alive. So, so yeah, so, you know, you, it's kind of a little different, but, uh, but yes, you, um, so you were kind of like a, uh, I don't know, kind of like a high level mortician, <laughs> I don't know, yeah, but yeah, so you, you were very connected to the cult of Anubis and, um, so you might see Anubis in your in your ayahuasca trip. So if you see a jackal-headed god, then you know who that is. So right. yeah, um, or and then also the 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 what they call the feathered serpent. That's from from the South American culture. Um, so and then from there, let me see. Um, you didn't have many lives. Um, I think you had an Asian life after that. And I think, you know, that too, it was, you know, the trip to Asia as a Procyonian extraterrestrial. And then you also had an incarnation. You were always fascinated with, with Asia. I think you liked the Eastern. You, you, I think you align yourself more with the Eastern culture more than Western culture. Okay. So, um, and in this, that life, um, Oh, that's interesting. Um, you didn't have anything to do with medicine in that life. Um, I'm seeing you. Uh, I think you, I don't know. Um, trying to, you were like an official of some sort, but uh, okay. Huh, okay. Um, this could be where your martial arts um, you were, and they keep saying police and I'm thinking, what? <laughs> and, uh, uh, police, I think you were part of a security, um, like a, uh, okay. Now, okay. Now it's making sense. Um, um, you were part of a group that, uh, was kind of, uh, took, you know, would watch over, um, to make sure things stayed safe with, you know, the, the royal, the royal, um, families and also the nobility. So, um, your group had to learn martial arts, of course, to do that, <laughs> you know, because that's what, that was the main thing they used. And, but you were like the head of the police force, you know, whatever, you know, whatever the, their equivalent was. So, so you were also, you were like a martial arts master in that life and, um, I always, I've always thought my whole life that I connect with samurais. Yeah. Always. Yeah. And, and I think it was a samurai group. Yes, I think it was. And I think it was a life, but it was like the equivalent in China. Okay. So, um, you know, because they also had, you know, samurai type of, you know, folks as well. Um, and, uh, in that life, uh, you, you know, you were, I think, highly respected and, uh, people, I think, felt grateful to your group because you kept everybody safe. Okay. So it was, um, especially I think the nobility and, you know, the people, um, that, 
uh, you know, that, that were utilizing your services mostly. But, uh, um, but I think the reason why you chose that life um, was because you wanted to have a different experience than just being in, involved with some sort of healing or, or, you know, or science. So, so you just wanted a different, and you, I think you enjoyed the life because, you know, you were able to, I think, express yourself more physically and it was just, you know, I mean, you didn't have to focus on healing people. You could focus on just, you know, developing your own physicality. So, so it was, you know, different, but it was good. I think it added to, you know, who you are today. And, um, after that, um, I'm actually seeing an incarnation in, um, actually in the United States. Um, but it was, and I think it was, um, you didn't have many lives. It was very few few and far between, um, uh, and in that life you were, you know, European heritage, but I think you were somebody that I think came from Europe and, uh, reestablished himself in the United States. And this was during, I think the early part of the United States, um, uh, history. So I'm thinking it might be, uh, early 1800s. Um, maybe late 1700s, but I think it was early 1800s. And I'm seeing in that lifetime, um, you, and I'm trying to see what it was that you were doing. Um, and so I'm seeing you were highly, uh, I think you might've been a scientist in that life too. Um, cause they're saying you were highly educated and you had this fascination with, again, you all, you love to travel. This is part of, I think, inherent to, in who you are. And you didn't, you were, I think, getting frustrated in Europe. You felt Europe was too, too stifling. So you wanted to go have a big adventure and you decided to, you know, move to the United States at, and this was early on in when the you know, United States was still didn't have all, you know, the 50 States, you know, it was you know, much early on in its history. And I'm seeing that in that lifetime, um, you were part of several expeditions, I think just to uh, observe, uh, they're saying plant and animal life. So you were, you were kind of like a biologist. Um, so, so you were, and I'm seeing that you're, you, 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 took, you, you kept a diary and you were keeping this diary and you were drawing pictures of all the things you were seeing and, uh, and, but you weren't involved with healing people in that life. You were just, I think mostly just doing observational work. Um, um, so, uh, but I think, uh, you had a lot of interactions during that time with the native Americans and you were, I think, fascinated with their culture and how they were able to, you know, heal themselves using plants and, you know, more natural healing modalities. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so you, at that time, you were learning a lot from the Native Americans and, you know, they were learning from you as well, but, uh, but you were, you know, fascinated with how healthy they were, you know, despite the harsh conditions they lived in, you know, these were very hardy people. Um, so until they got in, you know, integrated with the white per people with their, you know, all their diseases and things like that, that kind of almost wiped out some of the Native American groups. But, uh, um, but you had this affinity for their culture and you felt you, you admired, I think the high spirituality, they were always very connected to nature, very connected to animals and and very connected to plants and they were very connected with with spirit you know with the great spirit and you you really admired that and um i'm seeing in that lifetime you did have a wife and family but you would go on expeditions a lot and sometimes you'd be gone for a long time and your your wife was you know i think had a hard time with it and she would say, you need to stay home, you know, <laughs> so, and you're like, well, that, my work is out there, it's not, you know, here, you know, so, um, so you had a, you know, it was kind of difficult for you, um, at times, but it, you had very interesting lives on earth, I mean, each one of them had a very interesting component, and I think that was by design, you, you wanted to have 
exposure to as many cultures as possible with the few that you had and uh, and really get a good idea of I think um, and I think part of what you were doing too with all these lies is kind of the common thread was uh, learning about earth um, earth physicality or you know the, the interconnectedness between you know the human body and the the environment okay so and you know uh, so this was always you're trying to get a better understanding of the human body throughout your your your, your different lifetimes so um, so we have about 15 minutes left and um, do you have any questions for me Thank you. And, Thank you. And um, I, I said to myself, I know this is real, as she mentions Atlantis. Atlantis. Mm -hmm. So uh, just the fact that you hit on that, uh, uh, mind blown. Um, and and I think I knew instinctively mm -hmm. that it was it, that it was legit in the first place mm -hmm. um, before, before I stepped into it. But God, man, all the things you are just absolutely over the target dropping bombs. Mm -hmm. um, now, as far as questions, um, what do you see in the future okay. um, for me as far as future incarnations? Anything? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, okay. I'm seeing one more life on earth. Um, and but it's, uh, it'll be fifth dimensional earth, not third dimensional earth. Um, yes. Yes. Yeah. So, and, and what you'll be doing is um, assisting in that lifetime, you'll be assisting people uh, with the remainder of their shifting from carbon based bodies into more crystalline based bodies. Okay. And I think that's, again, this work that you're doing, even though this is kind of more your apex life that's going to kind of be like the accumulation of your, the, the, the end of your, your journey here on earth. But in this life, you're really trying to find out what it is that's keeping humans from evolving, you know, physically. Okay. And actually I want to stay in, yeah, I, I want to stay in touch. Yeah. I want to, yeah. I want to stay in touch with you because I, I have a hard time integrating myself into my human body. So, um, and I think you'll be using your son, you'll be using, you know, several people, you know, your, you know, your clients as, you know, kind of a, because humans are being beat up right now as far as physically. Oh my God. You know, absolutely. I mean, we're just being bombarded with toxicity. It's, it, I mean, neg, I mean, not just physically, but also, you know, mentally and emotionally. I mean, it's, it, you know, no wonder people are sick, you know, I mean, and a lot, and even a lot of star seeds are, are struggling with their health, you know, because, of this constant bombardment and I really admire what you're doing because you. yeah, somebody has to come in and help the humans be able to heal, you know, and, and it's not going to no longer happen through conventional medicine. It's going to be happening through diet and through, um, and through, you know, natural remedies, you know, so, um, I was diagnosed with cancer, um, not last year, but a year before last in 2016. And my doctor wanted me to do chemo and radiation. And I said, hell no. <laughs> I was like, there is no freaking definitely help you with that. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, so what I ended up doing is I did it through cutting out sugar from my diet. And, uh, I, uh, I did a whole bunch of different healing modalities. I did uh, theta healing, uh, essential oils. I mean, anything that I could try, I tried. And 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 I and I, as of October 2016, I was in remission, but uh, I still am. But right. yeah, so hoo hoo. But uh, but yeah, and even now, but even now, I struggle with my physicality. I struggle. It's just um, I don't know. Uh, I think as Arcturian, I my physicality like your son doesn't integrate well with the human body. So, um, so I might, I might be, you know, struggling with some of that kind of same, same concept. 
the, I, I, I wanted to mention, uh, um, oh, let me, let me finish up this part and I'll tell you the badass Procyon story. Um, so, uh, so I do see one more incarnation on earth for you. Um, John and I are going to go home, so <laughs> we'll leave, we'll leave you second waivers and third waivers to, you know, finish up the earth deal. And then, um, and then, uh, what I'm seeing after that is more than likely you're going to return to Procyon. Okay. And you'll continue doing, um, with other projects, you know, um, um, there, uh, whatever I think the Procyonian people will decide to do next, um, but um and you may continue to work somewhat with earth but as a procyonian not as a earth person anymore so so yeah you're so you're going to be um you're you're going to go back home eventually um and then from there um the records are saying that um yeah i think you know from there you're just going to continue on with your spiritual evolution you're going to be moving probably more away from uh, technology at that point and moving more towards very, very high spiritual, uh, projects. Okay. So, uh, so I think, you know, you're going to start to integrate, I think more, more of a connectedness with, uh, with the unity consciousness. Okay. And, and maybe, um, integrating more of the, you know, divine feminine aspects. And cause right now you're a very, you're a very masculine oriented soul, which there's nothing wrong with that, you know. I, you know, souls we all have, you know, certain signatures. But I see you, um, your your new path beyond uh, when you get into Procyon and beyond will be try, trying to integrate more of those feminine energies. So, and I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing that you're doing that today, even now. Um, you are a Gemini, and Gemini's are kind of uh, they 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 like to exhibit, you know, you know different, different aspects of their personalities. So, so I see that you're, you're as a, for a man, you're probably very, um, in tune with your feminine side, but, but I see you continuing that even more so, so, that, you know, to, to become more of a, a unified spiritual being, but, uh, the, for the badass Procyon story, um, um, I was, I was working a bit with Tolek. I don't know if you know who he is. Um, Tolek is a, um, he's human, um, but he's a, an emissary. Yeah, Tolek. Yeah. You might want to look into some of his, his work. And actually, I, uh, it, it's actually T-O-L-E-C. Okay. Tolek. And, uh, he's a human being, um, but he does a lot of, uh, speaking events and things like that. And, uh, um, he was telling us a story about um, how uh, the reptilians ha used to have, you know, underground bases all over Earth. And, and you know, they were, you know, I, I think just, you know, it was difficult for, for us to, you know, to, you know to, for the, you know, the light side to ever get, you know, good grounding on Earth because of all these bases. Well... Once again, the Procyons and the Syrians tag team on this project, okay? <laughs> so what they did was, and actually the Procyonians, I think there was 13, the Procyonians took out 10 of the bases, so they blew them up. And I think they may have manifested themselves as earthquakes, okay? <laughs> so people just thought they were earthquakes, but they were actually these uh, reptilian bases and the, uh, the Syrians took out, I think two or three, uh, no, probably three. I think there was 13. So, um, so to me, uh, you know, if, uh, he told this story and I was like, you know, if that's true, we have a lot to thank to the, you know, we need to be giving the Procyonian people a medal or something. You know, or, Welcome. Yeah, I know. It's like, you know, a big, big, you know, heroes, you know, celebration, you know, for helping us out that way. And they did this, you know, very, uh, you know, discreetly, you know, they didn't, they didn't want, you know, you know, people to be aware that this was going on. So they did it very discreetly. So, um, and the Syrians were helping them out. So, you know, there's always this kind of relationship between the Procyonians and the Syrians. So, um, I think they're, you know, they're very connected to each other. So, 
So that's my badass story. <laughs> so, so to me, I think the Procyon people are pretty, pretty cool for doing that. So, um, so other than that, I'm going to check in with some of your guides because we have a couple of minutes left. And uh, most of your guides, um, you have, um, interestingly enough, both uh, Syrian and Procyon guides. Okay, so, and the Syrians are all about the physical uh, healing aspect, and the Procyonians are more, you know, technologic, technological, and uh, you're you're also connected with uh, Ashtar Kumara and also with uh, with Hilarion. Those are the two Syrian ascended masters. Um, and uh, you, you, yeah, you might want to write those down. Hilarion and Ashtar Kumara. Yeah, Ashtar Kumara and uh, and to a certain extent Kathumi as well. Um, and uh, so those they are also they're also acting as your higher level mentors um, because they they really I think admire the work that you're doing here on Earth. Um, you're gonna get really you're gonna get deep into psychological stuff, not just the physical, but also psychological. I mean, I think absolutely. That's when a, I counsel somebody, the first thing I ask them is, "Do you know who you are? Who are you?" Right. Because I think a lot of people are disconnected from who they are. You know yeah, what I mean? absolutely. Yeah. And that's a lot of the reason why I do the work that I do. And I don't consider myself a psychic. That's why you don't see psychic anywhere on my my website, because I think people have a really negative connotation with psychic. And uh, it, uh, what I do is based on history and what is based on reality. You know, it's just that I'm connecting with higher dimensional realms to get this information. So it's not even coming from my intuition. It's just information I'm downloading. Um, now, my intuition does play, you know, a, a, a part in me discerning what's what I'm seeing. But um, so it looks like we are at the end of our time. Unfortunately, it was fascinating getting to know you today. And Thank you uh, as well. I'm going to do a closing prayer and disconnect our energies. Um, Okay, I would like to thank the masters, teachers, and loved ones for their love and compassion. I would like to thank the lords of the Akashic Records for their point of view. And I would like to thank the Holy Spirit of Light for all knowledge and healing. The records are now closed. Amen. The records are now closed. Amen. The records are now closed. Amen. Your energy goes with you. My energy stays with me. Thank you so much for everything. Hey, yeah. Debbie, thank you. I, I can't say that enough time.